Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing today? After some tech difficulties, this is the second time um, in the past month or two that I've tried to set up a stream on YouTube, and I set it up fully, and everything's working. Okay. And I click on uh, start the stream on OBS. So OBS starts broadcasting. And then what happens is YouTube receives the signal and YouTube says, oh, the signal's good, excellent condition, click here to start streaming. And I click on there and then YouTube pops up an error. Sorry, streaming's not available right now. Try again later. And you can't even get rid of it. You click on it, it closes the stream. And I was like, huh? It's the second time this happened. I think it's just a glitch in, in the code because I'm not doing anything different. <clears throat> and all I do is I, I delete that stream. I go, I make a new one. Start it up and it works fine. So, it might be that YouTube just does something weird if, if there's a change in the code overnight or I don't know. I don't really know what it what, what it is. Um, but yeah, it happened this morning. It's annoying because, you know, you make a stream, people start queuing up for said stream and they're excited for it. And then the stream dies and you have to make a totally new one. And some people don't know there's another new stream and they're like, oh, they filled not stream today or something. Um, and that's very much not the case. Um... With YouTube, unlike Twitch, there's not one static place to go for streams. Every stream is its own unique URL in your browser. Even though if you go to uh, youtube.com forward slash DSP gaming forward slash live, that's kind of a shortcut that will take you to whatever the latest live stream is. So you don't actually need the direct link to the latest live stream. You can just use that as your shortcut. And... Uh, that's what I always link to when I when I tweet about, oh, my stream is live or whatever. That's what I tweet you guys. I'm not going to tweet you the individual URL every day because it che keeps changing, you see? So apologies for any little confusion. Already I can tell you we have less viewers starting on the pre-stream today than we typically do because I think people got confused. And it's not anyone's fault. It's YouTube glitches. You know, what are you going to do? Uh, luckily, it's not a big deal. It's not something that happens every day, it, not even that often. I think, it's, like I said, the second time since... I've been doing full-time streaming here on YouTube since May that it's really happened, although it has happened, I think, twice in the last month. So, kind of weird. Um, anyway, everyone, welcome to the Pre-Stream Podcast. It's Saturday, January 15th, 2022. I'm Darkside Phil, of course, and I welcome you here to another full and fun day of gameplay streaming. It is a very cloudy, foggy day outside here in Washington State. Um, I don't think we'll have any problems with lighting as long as it doesn't change, but man, it's foggy outside, like super foggy outside. And I uh, hope you guys are ready for a fun day of variety streaming, as usual. I mean, I don't think you can get any further away from a first-person shooter, a classic first-person, excuse me. Let's try this again. A classic survival horror game and a modern first-person shooter that's also kind of based on a classic. Like, uh, two very different kinds of games, but also very fun. Okay, and I hope you guys are excited for the fun variety that we're going to have on the streams today. Uh, on the pre-stream today. I don't have too much to really talk about. What I'd like to do is just do a quick follow-up on a few things like the schedule and what it's going to be for the weekend and a little bit, just a tiny follow-up on yesterday's major story about NFTs and gaming because there's not much else to say besides a tiny little bit of a follow-up with the fallout of what happened with all that controversy. But outside of that, there's not that much going on today. So what I'd actually like to do, which I hope more people will join the pre-stream for, is after, you know, the little bit of me talking, we can open it up and be more interactive. We did this a few days ago. You guys seem to like having a more interactive pre-stream. And I said, hey, if you guys like that, I would do that every once in a while, kind of open up the stream to open Q&A and just chat for a while um, before we get started with gameplay. Okay? And I feel like today would be another day where we could definitely do that. If anyone talks, because no one's talking in the chat. I don't know why. There's over 100 people here on the stream and climbing, by the way. It is going up. Um, as usual, I feel like I should give you a quick reminder that if you enjoy the content, if you enjoy the streams, please consider giving them a like here on YouTube. When you're watching live and you give a stream a like, it gives this stream more visibility on YouTube and makes it easier to find in search results. So, for example, later today, when I start playing Resident Evil 4, if you're having a good time and you... Uh, you want more people to find the stream. Give it a like. And when people are searching for, oh, you know, search for survival horror, 
Search for a live stream of horror games or a live stream of Resident Evil. GSP Gaming will show up in the search results. If you don't like the stream, what happens is YouTube hides it. They actually take a giant elephant, and the elephant is rotund at butt, sits on the stream and hides it in a corner underneath its sweaty butt. It's disgusting, but that's what it does. Like, I'm, you think I'm joking, but actually, it makes... It, if, if streams and or if videos don't have engagement on YouTube, they're almost impossible to find, even if you're searching for specifically that piece of content. It actually can make it impossible to find. I know because this used to happen to DSP Gaming all the time. So, anyway, <clears throat> welcome to the stream. Hope you guys are ready for some fun. Uh, and please like the stream as you're watching it if you're enjoying it and you'd like to give it a little bit more visibility and help it out on YouTube. Same thing if you're watching this on demand on YouTube. Consider giving this, this video a like and or leaving a comment on the video, okay? First, let's just go through the schedule so you guys know what to expect. So today's the continuation of Resident Evil 4 and from what I'm to understand, we're going to head into the end game of the game, but likely not beat it. And what I mean by that is I guess... We're still not at the end. It's funny because Resident Evil 4 is a game that kind of builds to a climax multiple times. And every time you think, gee, maybe I'm near the end of the game. Maybe this is kind of, you know, we're getting to a culmination. Oh, and then it just keeps going. Right? Like when you get to the Salazar uh, castle, it almost feels like, oh, this could be the end of the game. Then you're in the castle for like eight hours. <laughs> then you get to the end of the castle. Oh, I guess this could be the end of the game. Big Salazar boss fight finally. Oh, now you're on an island. What? It just keeps going. It just there's several times during the game that it, that that happens. So it's kind of like I don't want to say it's a bait and switch, but it's kind of interesting that the game keeps itself revved up and, and going. And personally, as I've told you guys many times, I don't actually remember uh, in the game how far we are in the game um, because I only played it once before in 2014. And quite frankly, I don't really remember much of the run of this game after that part in the castle where they're all trying to grab Ashley and you're trying to defend her when they're you know she's turning the cranks and you guys snipe the enemies, the cultists. I really don't remember that much after that. Like I've told you guys, I've been doing all this stuff. I don't remember most of the game at this point. It's kind of maybe faint recollections of a few things here or there, but man, I don't really remember much at all. So to me, it's kind of like. I'm enjoying it. I'm definitely enjoying playing it again. In fact, like I told you guys, it actually, I like it more now than I did at the beginning. Because when I was playing this at the beginning on the Christmas marathon, um, I was a little inebriated, honestly. I was drinking, you know, at that point. And the sluggishness of the controls uh, definitely made the game feel, man, it feels outdated. You know, I want to move faster. I want to shoot and aim more easily. And you just can't do it. Because... It's not like modern games. There's no dodge button. There's no quick aiming. It's just kind of like take your time, aim with the laser, fire, um, etc. But as I played the game, it's actually grown on me more and more. I'm getting, I got used to the controls and got better weapons for sure. And as the more I played the game, the more I actually like it. And you know, it's funny because I think I had the same thing happen in 2014, where at first I was like, ah, oh, it's frustrating, it sucks. And then I got used to it, and then I like it more and more. And now I actually like appreciate it. So, I'm excited for more today. Major stream, three plus hours. Now, I don't foresee us beating it today from what people have told me, because some people have said you might even need two streams to beat it, okay? So, if that is the case, let's see how far we can get today. And that's actually going to directly determine what we do tomorrow, and I'll explain in a moment, okay? So, main stream today, Resident Evil 4. Very excited for it. I hope you guys are too. Tonight, the late stream is my second session of Halo Infinite multiplayer for the week. I'm aiming to try to play this twice a week so that I can feel like I'm getting enough uh, practice to stay decent at the game. I, as I've told you guys, I feel like if I'm not playing it twice a week, I'm not going to be able to hang with people who are playing it, you know, consistently. And I hope you'll join me tonight, 6.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, for a fun late-night multiplayer stream. <clears throat> and uh, we'll probably do a mix, just like we did last time. I'll probably do some ranked, but I'll probably do some non-ranked, and see how it goes. From what I'm going to understand, this coming week they're patching Big Team Battles to finally fix it. So if you want to consistently just play Big Team Battles, the game won't crash two matches in and then you can't play it for the rest of the night. It'll actually fix itself and allow you to keep playing it. This has been one of the major gripes of people playing the game is that Big Team Battles just don't work right. You'll play a, a two or three and then pff, it's done. You can't even play it for the rest of the day. So we'll see. <clears throat> 
Okay, now tomorrow. The main gameplay stream tomorrow will be more Skyrim Anniversary Edition, okay? Played this yesterday. Had a good time. We got all these quests at Falkreath. Went out and did a bunch of those quests. Went back to Falkreath and unintentionally aggroed one of the NPCs. The entire town wants me dead. I spent about 20 minutes trying to figure out how to fix this, and I couldn't figure it out. So, I appealed to the viewing audience, okay? I appealed to the viewing audience saying, can you guys help me? Can you, you know, give me your advice on what to do to try to fix this? Because I obviously I don't want Falkreath aggroed to me for the entirety of the playthrough. I'd like to go back and I have a mission to trade in, other stuff to do there. I don't even know. Maybe there's plot stuff there I need for the game, the main game. I don't know. Um... So the, I've got various different pieces of advice. Some people are like, well, the thing is, usually when you aggro someone in a town, it's because you used a weapon. And typically what you can do then is just put your weapon away, and then the guard will, will basically warn you and arrest you, take any items you have on you that are stolen, and make you pay a fine to get out of the jail. That won't work, because I didn't hit anyone with a weapon. I shouted at an NPC, and that's what pissed them off. Dragon shouting. And so now, what do you do? Put your fucking mouth away? Take out duct tape and tape your mouth? Obviously, you can't do that in the game. So, that doesn't work. Um, some people suggested leaving and coming back. I already did that. It didn't work. They still aggro to me no matter what. Um, I guess the best advice is as follows. This is what someone told me. They said, the way the game works is, someone in a town will be angry at you for a set period of time. And there's certain criteria you can do to get to reset that town. But the only real surefire way to do it is to just stay the fuck away. Like, leave for a while and come back much later in the game. And likely by then, let's say you wait like a week or two weeks in game time because you're off doing questing elsewhere. Basically, the, the townspeople will kind of forget about it and not aggro to you anymore. But what might end up happening is the guards might say something like, Wait, I know you. You're the one who started a problem. And they may still enforce the law and arrest you and make you pay a fine for what you had previously done. So, likely that's what we're doing tomorrow. Instead of trying to fix Falkreath, which looks like it's unfixable right now, I really fucked it up, uh, we'll probably go somewhere else and go exploring and do questing and maybe another town or something. I'm not sure. Um, and just kind of, uh, right? Just kind of messing around. We'll do other content. And then, later in the game, we'll likely go back, because I do have quests to turn in there and stuff, but... What are you going to do? I can't do them right now. So, and by the way, in a game like Skyrim, <clears throat> there's really nothing wrong with that, right? Because uh, there's so much content in the game. Who cares if we have to leave for a while and come back? No skin off my back. It's not like there's nothing else to do. I mean, holy shit. Probably just t take two steps this way and we'll find another cave. Look up and there's a dragon, right? Look down and there's probably like a zombie grabbing your nutsack. So there's enough to do in the game that we're not going to be bored because we're not doing Falkreath. Okay. So, that's tomorrow's main stream. I'm excited to see what we do now because I guess we're heading off for new ventures. Okay. Uh, now, Sunday night's stream is currently up in the air. And what I mean by that is Sunday night could be one of two different things. And here's my ideas. Okay. If we play through Resident Evil 4 today, and we have a great time, and we get really far, and people are like, oh, well, now you're nearing the end. You could probably beat it in, like, another couple of hours. Then, honestly, I'd like to beat Resident Evil 4 on Sunday night. I'd like to do a late-night stream of RE4 and complete the game. Because that way, we can fully move on to new stuff this coming week and not have a lingering game where it's only, like, a couple hours left in it. I think that makes a lot of sense. Let's wrap it up. By the way, that's the final consecutive stream of the week for me tomorrow night. So it would be a good way to end the, the streaming week with a bang, finishing a fun game, right? But I don't know, again... Oh, excuse me. It's disgusting. Only having played the game once before, eight years ago, I don't remember the end of the game. So I'm not going to know today uh, how far in I've gotten. I'm going to need your help to help determine how much is left in the game by the time that I finish today's stream. So for those of you who know the game well and would like to help, please, by all means, by the end of today's stream, let me know about how much gameplay I have left. If it's two hours or less, I want to beat it Sunday night. Okay? Now, what if at the end of today's stream, no, I'm not near the end and there's still many hours left. Then what we'll do on Sunday night, we're going to play one of the two Game Pass games that we experimented with back on Thursday night. The games are as follows. Sniper Elite 4, I Am Fish. Two very different games, very fun games from what I'm seeing. Um, and it seems like people would like to see me continue with both. 
And I think I would like to continue with Vol. So, what we will do is, uh, as I said, we'll play by ear today. If we get close enough to the end, Resident Evil. If not, then what we'll do is a poll overnight. You guys will vote. Do I want more Sniper Elite 4 or do I want I Am Fish? And whatever wins the poll will be the late stream on Sunday night, the final stream of the week. Okay? Now, I'm off from streaming uh, on Monday. And I know that when I am not here streaming, a lot of people just don't know what to do with themselves. It's like, you know, normally I'm here. It's, I'm consistently here putting out streams and content for you every single day. And some people just can't handle when I'm not here and they kind of like, you know, they kind of like hold themselves like this and they start to, to shake back and forth like this uncontrollably. They don't know and then they, they oh, where's Phil? Where's Phil? Now listen, I just, I'm here to tell you, it's okay. I swear to you I'm going to be back. It's not that big of a deal, okay? I'll be back on Tuesday and, hold on. My neck is a little stiff today and this sucks when my neck is stiff because it usually means a muscle is sore and needs to be stretched or pulled. Or I need to like crack the neck to relieve some pressure in it. Problem is sometimes when I crack my neck, I can pinch a nerve and that's when I get my bad pain. As I told you guys over the years, I tend to have an issue right here where I can get shooting pain through my shoulder all the way down my arm. And sometimes my thumb gets numb. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm hoping that I can just alleviate the stiffness of the neck without that. I guess we'll have to see what happens today. It's bothering me. If you see me going like this with my neck, that's why I'm doing that. Um, but anyway, um, that being said. Tuesday I'll be back, and Tuesday will be a fun day. The first stream on Tuesday, I'm going to attempt to beat Condemned Criminal Origins. Okay, this is a game that we resumed the playthrough of this past week. I did a major daytime stream of it um, a couple days ago, and it went well. People seemed to like it. I made major progress. In fact, there's only three chapters left to beat the game. Being that it's a legacy Xbox 360 title from the launch of the console, it's actually quite fun to play and see what kind of games they came out with back then. And I'm looking forward to actually beating it. So that's going to be the mainstream on Tuesday. And Tuesday night, we're going to return back to Lost Judgment for the fun weekly post-game stream where we do two hours of side content, searching for the hidden squirrels, uh, doing other side missions and the like. And there are a lot of side missions available now. If I remember correctly, there's at least two, if not three, that are still open that I can do in the city. So that'll be, uh, that will be Tuesday night. Now, I wish I could tell you, hey guys, I'm absolutely sure my schedule for the next week is thus. What I'm assuming is my schedule for the next week will be, I'll be streaming six straight days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just like this week was. So I'm planning my week based on that, but it could change at any time on the fly, and I'll let you know if it does, okay? The plans for this week are as follows. <clears throat> Number one, continue on with... Skyrim as a major playthrough, that'll be a daytime stream. Number two, dependent on your feedback. If you guys want to see me do any optional post-game content in Resident Evil 4, I will consider it. I guess what people are telling me is that there's post-game missions starring Ada Wong that is like it's her own little mini campaign that takes several hours. So maybe it would be like another post-game addendum stream one day. I would consider doing that if you want it. If not, I don't have to. It's really up to you guys, Okay. So there you go. Um, in addition to that, this week I would think I would like to start up a new playthrough. And likely it'll be, uh, I'm thinking, maybe Sniper Elite 4. If you guys, since you guys really seem to like when I played it for that hour the other night. And a lot of people were like, yeah, I wish you would consider doing this as a main stream. Maybe I'll give it a shot as a main gameplay stream one day and just see if you guys like it. Okay? So for the day streams this week, it'll be Condemned Criminal Origins concluding, Continuation of Skyrim, Maybe more Resident Evil 4 if you guys really want it. And the possibility of a new playthrough such as uh, Sniper Elite 4. Now, another thing. On the 20th, so that is six days, no, five days from now. So that would be, let's see. Today is Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So there's a new game coming out. It is called Rainbow Six Extraction. It is a game that is in development for a while now and got delayed. It was supposed to be out in the fall during the hardcore gaming season. I guess what it's supposed to be is gameplay similar to Resident... Uh, I almost said Resident Evil. Gameplay similar to, to Rainbow Six, but it's co-op zombie survival. You know, like Back for Blood last year that did so well. <laughs> um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. You know, 
over 10 years ago, zombie games were all the rage. You had Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. You had the Walking Dead episodic game from Telltale Games. You had um, zombies in the Black in uh, Call of Duty games from Treyarch, right? The zombie survival and stuff like that. And people really seemed to like it. It was a big fad at the time. That all zombie games were super popular, right? Dead Rising 3, etc. But I think that the time of zombies is past. I think that Walking Dead is nowhere near as prominent as it used to be. People don't even really talk about it anymore. I mean, it exists. It still has a following, but I'm not aware of people going crazy for zombie shit like they used to. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a fad, and the fad was very popular for a while, but now it's kind of like, yeah, it's there, but do I really go crazy for it? No, not really. Um, I don't really foresee this game doing, like, amazingly. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm what I'm thinking is... I'll try it. It's under Game Pass, by the way. Thank God. Thank God the game's under Game Pass. And it's not like you're invested in having to drop like 60 plus dollars to play this, this fucking game. That, honestly, I don't know how many people would really even buy it. Unless you're like a giant fan of Rainbow Six and just dying for a new game that you hope is good. But it's under Game Pass, so I'm going to give it a shot and see if it's any good. All right? And uh, if it is, great. If not, if I play it and it ends up being kind of boring or not that good, then I don't have to play it anymore. And that's the good thing about Game Pass is when you get these games released under Game Pass, there's zero risk because who cares if it sucks? Just don't play it again. Do something else. You have a million other games to play. So I'm happy about that for sure. Um, so yeah, uh, that's my attitude. Is on the 20th it comes out, give it a shot. And uh, if it's good, great. If not, who cares? So we'll try it on the 20th, okay? It may be an ongoing playthrough that I play during the week. It may not be. Now, let's talk about the night streams. Because the night streams now are changing. Because, man, I finished most of the stuff that I was doing as ongoing night streams, right? So we will have a night stream of Lost Judgment. There will be probably two streams of Halo Infinite. And likely there's going to be Street Fighter on Friday as usual. But that's only four streams. What about the other two? Well, there's good potential here to do some interesting stuff. Maybe one night... We could do I Am Fish for a two-hour segment and see if it works as a late-night chill stream, okay? In addition, there's definitely been desire for me to do more Game Pass-related stuff. So what I'm thinking is one night this week, we will do just like we did last week. We'll do polls on the main channel page of DSP Gaming. You guys will vote on what Game Pass games you want to see me try this time. And we'll have two Game Pass games that I've tried one night and see if they're any good, Okay. I'm not against even doing that maybe as a regular thing, maybe every week or every other week, just to get some variety on the streams to see what kind of games are out there and to see what kind of stuff maybe either missed out on or just didn't even know existed. And I give it a shot. Maybe it'll turn out to be something good, okay? So that's what I'm thinking for this coming week. Sounds a good variety, right? Now, the only other major thing happening in January is on January 28th, near the very end of the month, the new Pokemon game comes out. It's Pokemon Legends Arceus. And yes, I will be playing it on the Switch. I'm very excited for it because I haven't played a Pokemon game in a while. Uh, I did skip Pokemon uh, Diamond and Pearl back in uh, November because I didn't want to start up a Pokemon game, not even finish it, and then have another one coming out, right? So, I'm excited for this. <clears throat> we'll have to see what happens. Uh, hopefully it's good. A lot of people are, are really torn about this game. Some people seem to be very hopeful for it, and other people are like, ah, it's going to suck. I'm, I'm keeping my, my, what do they call it? My prospects open. I'm, I'm feeling positive. I want to believe it could be a good game. <laughs> so let's see together, I guess. But that's really the only major, uh, game coming out this month. That's like a high profile release. So this is a unique month where for the next two weeks, right? I have freedom to kind of do whatever I want. I have no commitment to have to play a new release or anything like that, which is why this is a great time to be checking out this game pass stuff. Okay, good. Of course, February will be exactly the opposite. In February, it's going to be new release, new release, new release, new release, new release, new release. Oh my God, how do I play all these new releases at once? So, enjoy the enjoy the freedom of the more chill, relaxed atmosphere around here. Enjoy the Game Pass stuff while we can, because man, things are going to explode next month that are going to be way different. We're going to have people coming to the streams who haven't been here in a long time because they're going to be here for the new releases, and it's going to be zany and crazy. Okay. All righty then. Use my hand, sanit uh, hand sanitizer, my hand exerciser this morning. <laughs> does Game Pass have any Dynasty Warriors games? I don't think it has outright Dynasty Warriors, but it does have games that play like Dynasty Warriors. Like one of the ones that was in the poll was One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. 
And that's a Dynasty Warriors style game with One Piece characters. See? Okay. Good stuff. All right. So that's the deal. That's the schedule. Uh, other quick odds and ends. Guys, look, we actually made more progress with members. It sure would be great if you're not a member or if your membership is expired, if you consider renewing it or becoming a member for the first time. We only need 22 more members by the end of the month to hit all of our goals. The goal is as follows. Hit 350 members. We're going to do a special marathon event of Game Pass games where we're going to play five or more during the course of a day. We're going to see if they're any good. And I'm going to do a live Feasting with the King where we order some new cuisine and try it out live together. Hopefully it's better than Filipino because that was a huge bust back on Christmas, uh, during the Christmas marathon, right? <clears throat> so, it should be pretty fun. And I hope that you guys will consider becoming a member if you're not. We do have to hit the members goal to have the celebration. We didn't do it last month. It would be great to do it this month. The, the most members we've ever had here on DSP Gaming was 334. It would be great to make a new record today, right? I wish we could. It would be very nice if we could. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. All right. Um, so outside of that, another just quick reminder, since now I've been talking for over 20 minutes, welcome to everyone who joined the stream in the last 20 minutes because over 100 pe new people joined. Thank you for chilling with me today. If you like the stream, please give it a like. It gives it visibility here on YouTube and helps the channel. Also, if you're watching this video on demand on YouTube, please give it a like. All right. So I've got a follow-up, a very brief follow-up to yesterday's NFT story. For those who don't know, yesterday, the big story on the internet was that the very, very prominent, popular, very well-renowned voice actor, Troy Baker, announced his partnership with an NFT company involving NFTs he'll be selling. But I guess I guess from what I'm not understand, even further in, because I didn't get this from his post, it's about his voice. It has to do with like his digitized voice being an NFT. I don't understand how that works, but apparently that's what he was doing, okay? So the entire internet was up in arms about this because they're like, don't you understand that number one, because of the way blockchain works, NFTs are incredibly energy hogs and it's terrible because if everyone does NFTs, we're all going to be overusing electricity and destroying the planet. And by the way, also NFTs are a gateway to ruining game, gaming and gameplay content because everything will be nickel and dime for gamers and consumers. Oh, by the way, don't you understand that if NFTs of digitized voices become prominent, that means that voice actors could end up being out of work because now people will own their voices and blah, blah, blah. So basically all this giant uproar about it. And I gave you my take on it. I'm not going to be going exceptionally long today about it. You know that I don't like NFTs. I think they're stupid. It's another thing where people are so pretentious and up their own butts thinking they're so self-important that they think that digitally having rights to something means anything when it doesn't. It doesn't mean shit. It's a virtual fucking world. You don't have rights to shit. It's you're buying nothing. You're an idiot. Okay? But anyway, um, a quick follow-up to all of this. All right? Troy Baker panicked because he saw all of the negative backlash he was getting all over the internet, and he put out a series of apology tweets to which I'm not even going to read them because they're so fucking pathetic. Like, basically he says, oh, I really had no idea that announcing this and saying this would have caused this kind of reaction all over the internet. Man, you know, sometimes I, I get too excited about projects. And in this case, me saying either either uh, hate or create, you know, uh, really I didn't, you know, is, is too, too black and white and too constrictive of an opinion to say that and I shouldn't have said it that way and I'm sorry and I apologize to all my fans who I've embarrassed and blah 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 so what's hilarious about these apology tweets you can read them he may put out like four or five of them he never actually says oh I'm, I, I'm, I agree with you and the NFTs are bad and I'm going to stop he actually just says I'm sorry that I was kind of harsh with the way that I said stuff in my original tweet that's it so literally he apologizes for being an asshole but then continues to be an asshole he doesn't care, which is what I told you guys yesterday. I told you this is the kind of guy he is. Like, he just doesn't care about other people's opinions. He literally has this defense. His defense is, but I'm a storyteller. And storytellers need to tell their stories and be free to tell their stories. Okay, Troy, I do real quick. You're not a storyteller. You never told a story. You're a voice actor. You read fucking lines of dialogue off a page. And yes, you act when you do that. But you're not telling the story. You didn't write the fucking plot. You just do the dialogue. You never literally wrote a game in your life. What are you talking about? You're not a storyteller. 
You don't even know what your job is. You're a fucking voice actor, you idiot. <laughs> You're reading this, it's like, what are you, is he talking about? It's, but this is what I mean. Like, this is the kind of guy he is. He's so up his own ass with himself. He thinks he's like this super important guy in the industry who tells the best stories and he's such an artiste. He's like, he thinks he's Johnny Depp. You know what I'm saying? Like, he really feels that way. Like, he thinks he's like this super important dude. When in reality, yes, he is one of the best voice actors there are. I love his work. But my God, can you have an overinflated opinion of yourself? Right? And again, he doesn't apologize and say he's going to not do the NFTs. He just says, I'm sorry for the way I said stuff in the previous tweet. So, that's all I'm really going to say. I don't really want to follow up. Unless there's another development in this story, there's really no reason to talk about it again. Because it's a non-story. The guy's an asshole. I always knew he was an asshole from the way he conducted himself. But other people apparently had the wool pulled over their eyes and didn't realize that he was a pretentious prick. And that he acts like this. So, they thought he was some great dude. And now... It's like, oh, he's really not. Well, no shit. Everyone kind of knew that who had a brain, but I guess people get so up about the work that these people do, right, that they don't realize that the... Like I said yesterday, the person can be separate from the work. The work can be outstanding, best in class, oh my God, but the person can be a complete piece of garbage. And in this case, that kind of seems like the case. The guy is just an asshole. No one should really like him because his behavior is just obnoxious and... So fucking over pretentious shit. So why put up with him? All right, but you know what? If there's a game with his voice acting in it, I want I like him as a voice actor. I'll play the game. You see? So anyway, there you go. All right, enough about that. We're done. I don't want to talk about that again because I talked about it at length yesterday and there's really nothing else to say. So what we're going to do on today's pre-stream, we're going to make this more interactive. Here's what we're doing. I'm going to do shout outs for those who've contributed and update the leaderboard. Once we get through that, we're then going to open it up to people just to talk for a bit. I really don't have anything else to talk about on pre-stream today. Uh, it's kind of a dead day for game news and everything. I, the, let me give you a perspective. The biggest news for today in the gaming world, God of War released on PC, God of War from 2018, and it had like 60,000 concurrent players, and people are saying that's a big success. It's the second biggest Sony game ever on PC. Previously, the biggest one was Horizon uh, Zero Dawn, which had like maybe another five to 10,000 concurrent players or whatever. But people are like, oh, it's it's such a beautiful version of the game. It's look, It runs beautifully. It looks great. And I'm like, the game's fucking four years old. Who cares? That's like saying, oh, did you know Super Mario Bros. 3 runs great on PC? Yeah. Who fucking cares? The game is old as shit. Right? I like Super Mario 3, but it's not a fucking giant deal when an old game is running today. Who cares? To me, it's like non-news. But people on PC are such a, a group of people that are so centric around just PC news and PC gaming that anything that happens on PC, you know what I'm saying? Like, they freak out and it becomes, like, main page news. It's like, no, it's not. It's a fucking four-year-old game. Who fucking cares that it's on PC? I certainly don't, and no one else should either, but these people freak out like it's some kind of big fucking news because they just sit there all day waiting for something on PC. You see? So anyway, um... There's really nothing to talk about in gaming news, so I'd like to open this up to discussion and we'll have some fun just having some dialogue, okay? So let's do shout-outs. Today we start off with a tip overnight from Slayer0804. Now, for those who don't know, Slayer has actually been someone who very frequently during my Lost Judgment playthroughs would show up and support the Lost Judgment streams, which is very nice of him because, let's be honest, the Lost Judgment streams did have a following, but it wasn't a mainstream following. It's not like people coming to watch me play Skyrim or Resident Evil or another action-based game because Lost Judgment is very Japanese-centric. It has a specific audience, but it's not my major viewing audience. So I'm very appreciative that Slayer came by and supported the streams frequently uh, during those streams. However, one thing that I should say, guys, and I, I haven't said it in a very long time, okay? I will say it, it should be common sense in the modern day, but sadly, a lot of people don't realize this, so I will go ahead and emphasize it again. Ladies and gentlemen, Please, I urge you for your own sakes, okay? Be careful with the information that you put on the internet. Be careful with what you say and do, but also the real-life ties that you have from your online persona to anything you have in person. And allow me to explain. In the modern day, so many people have social media accounts 
like a Facebook or an Instagram or a Twitter or a TikTok or a MySpace or a Friendster or, you know, whatever it may be, AOL Instant Messenger, right? Whatever you may use for social media purposes, interaction with other people or whatever. So many people seem to think it is safe to put your private real life information on the net because they feel like, oh, I'm a nobody, right? I'm not a, a, anyone on the internet who's going to get any kind of prominence, who's going to get any kind of attention or following. So who cares, right? I'll put all my private information up on the internet. It's not a big deal. I hate to tell you this, guys. It's sadly, this is not the case. And I wish it were. I wish that we could all just be safe and have a good time on the internet. It's not. The internet is the Wild West right now. And what I mean by that, there are very few protections on the internet from people harassing you when they get your hands on your information. A lot of people on the internet are very malicious and if they can find ways to mess with you they will just because they can so you, you would think oh well maybe if i was like a prominent businessman and i was rich someone would try to steal my identity and then impersonate me to open up a bunch of accounts and get a bunch of stolen money and shit no actually what i'm saying is it doesn't matter who you are it really doesn't these people are so messed up in the head that they will go out of their way to mess with you just because they can there's no rhyme, no reason, no actual explanation. They, they're they not going to get anything positive or beneficial out of it. They just do it because they can get away with it. They get some kind of a, a sick internal pleasure knowing that they somehow messed with someone on the internet. Even if they don't even see the end game result of what they've done, they'll still do it. That's how messed up some people on this planet are. And I hate to say it, but yeah, I personally have been the victim of this many, many times over the years, but I'm a public persona, right? I put myself out every day on the internet, on these streams, on a podcast, in gameplay. I'm a, I'm kind of a target, and I put my face on camera every day, and I become a target for that shit, right? And I can tell you guys, even prominently knowing that this is a, a, an issue and I'm a target, and putting safeguards into place for myself still people have found ways around shit that's out of my control still even with knowing everything i got redundancy on security that i've got on, on on websites and accounts and people still have found ways to get into shit because sadly i hate to say it we are still in the wild west of the digital world maybe in 10 20 years time things will change Maybe there'll actually be authorities who police the internet and take care of shit like this. There'll be better security in place for various sites and or things that there's no way anyone can mess with you. Right now, that is very much, very much not the case. Even if you do everything you possibly can to protect yourself and your own information and your identity and all your shit, it doesn't mean you're protected. So what I always tell everyone, or what I used to tell everyone back on Twitch, I used to do this almost daily on Twitch, I would warn everyone and say, please... If you're going to be someone who frequents any kind of social site, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Twitch, whether it's, again, any of these social media sites, if you're going to post up somewhere on a forum or Reddit, no matter what it might be, do yourself a huge favor, all right? Whatever account you use to talk to people on the internet, diversify that from any of your other content every anywhere. So, for example, if you're going to be on YouTube and you're going to have an account on YouTube, make it be Ice Cream Sandwiches 275. That's your account. Okay? But then don't go make a Facebook Ice Cream Sandwiches 275 and put all your real life information on your Facebook. And then go to Twitter and post up where you are with geotagged photos. No. Bad fucking idea. These people, if, they, if someone gets a bug up their ass about you on the internet, they will go out of their way to use that information against you in whatever negative way they can. And no, it would be nice to say, man, I feel safe, I feel protected, it's not a big deal. It's a big deal. These people are messed up and they will do whatever they can to mess with your life. And it's a sad fact. I wish I didn't have to say that to my viewership and tell you guys to be careful. I have to be. I, I, you know, Personally, from my own personal experience, I've had people try to impersonate me and try to open accounts in my name. I've had people try to close accounts that I have opened they try to impersonate me and close those accounts and say that they're me and fuck with me. One time they tried to turn my power off and they almost did. They had it scheduled to be turned off. 
And luckily, my power company has a thing where they won't turn it off right away. They take a few days and they send you a, a digital notice. So I got an email saying your power's going off. I'm like, what the fuck? And I called the company and tell them, what are you doing? No, I never authorized this. And they're like, oh, sorry, someone called and said they were you. Like, you cannot do that. Listen, you gotta have protections in fucking place. You can't just have people call in with general information and turn the fucking power off. What are you out of your mind? And they are. They're fucking out of their mind. This is what I mean. Like, this stuff, it seems like, oh, this is like common common sense. There is no common sense when it comes to shit on the internet. People can get away with anything. They really can't. Okay? Um, geez, over the years, I had people I had people, you know, hack into accounts and fuck with stuff. Remember I used to have two YouTube channels that are gone because some idiots found a way to hack into them and bro they broadcast uh, European football games on there, which is, you know, violation of copyright law and they got shut down. So I have entire YouTube channels finger snapped from the fucking internet for people who hacked them and fucked with them. You know what I mean? Like, all this stuff has happened to me, okay? And the last thing that I ever want to hear, and it's kind of, it's kind of a, a bad feeling, it's almost a horror story for me, is to hear that someone who I know from streams or whatever has been harassed, and in particular, if you're someone who comes to my streams and you support the streams in a big way, you know, you come and you tip or you, you do membership and super chat, you're someone, even in some cases, not even someone who in any way crowdfunds or financially contributes, but someone who's just a positive person in the chat. These people can latch themselves onto you and try to harass you just for trying to be a good person on the internet. I'm serious. They're that fucking messed up, okay? So please, I urge you, I urge you to please be careful with what you put on the internet. Please be careful with your own identity and information, all right? So Slayer had actually tipped me overnight and said, man, it's messed up because people were messing with him on the internet as a result of him, you know, being on my streams. And I have to, all I can say is I'm really sorry about that. Um, it's something that's happened many, many times over the years. I mean, this isn't a new thing. This is something that's been happened like a long time since I've been a content creator. I hear that people who, who I know who are fans or viewers get harassed online for nonsense, fucking nonsense. And the truth of the matter is, <clears throat> although these people will try to justify what they do, oh, the reason that I did this or that is because you said this or that, or because you supported this person, or because blah, blah, blah. They, they do it because they can get away with it. It doesn't matter what you've said and done. It doesn't matter. That's their their own kind of messed up, broken logic in their head. They're twisted kind of justifications so that they don't feel bad because they have to find a way so they don't morally feel bad about what they've done. But the truth is that most of these people are sociopaths. They don't have the same kind of feeling that we have about, oh, I actually just hurt an innocent person by fucking with them on the internet and doing shit with their, their information. They don't deserve it. Why, you know, They don't feel that. They don't have the ability. They don't have that emotion. They don't have that morality in them. They're sociopaths. So they just fucking have this split thing in their head that doesn't work right like ours does. And they just do this messed up stuff. And you got to understand that. They'll say whatever they want. Oh, I did it because you you pissed me off when you said this on a stream or when you contributed to that content creator. That really... No. They're just messed up. Their heads are broken. Okay? That's why they do it. And that's what we have to be aware of. And that's why we have to be careful with our own lives on the internet. Because these people are so messed up that they will do this stuff just because they can get away with it and then feel nothing afterward. We would feel terrible about it. Wow, I just fucked up, fucked up someone's life by messing with them because of their social media shit was on the internet and I fucked with them. But they don't feel nothing. They don't. They're, 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 they're broken people, okay? So, do your best to hide all of your real life information. Do not tie social media shit to accounts you're using on YouTube, on Twitch, on other... So like, if you have a social media, I strongly recommend it. I mean this. Don't fucking do a social media account on Facebook that has all your personal information. Don't post up your family members, your friends, places you go. Think about what, how people can utilize that to hurt you. Just think about that. If someone could just convince one person they're you based off the information that you put on the internet, that's a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? So be careful, man. Be absolutely careful. And again, I apologize to Slayer that anything happened to him because it's fucked up that people would harass people online as a result of them coming to a stream or whatever. But again, understand that when they say, oh, I did it because you said this on the stream, they're just, that's bullshit. That's their fucking twisted sociopathic way to justify what they've done and claim that it's a good reason they did it. There's no good reason to do what they did. They're just fucking crazy. Okay? All right. Now let's start with actual... Uh, 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 
contributions from today's stream. We start with an anonymous tipper who tipped me $4.20 and says, The most emotional part of Guardians of the Galaxy for me is when Star-Lord is convincing Nikki that her mom is not coming back. There you go. So thank you very much to the anonymous tipper. I agree with you. That is a very emotional part. I think that Guardians of the Galaxy actually... Rick? Fuzz? Fuzz. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the best written stories in years. It's I got more emotional parts than uh, than most you know movies and shit these days. It was that good. It was that well written of a game that I absolutely loved every moment every moment of this plot. It was so good. So strong recommendation from me. So Lies for Soul. Oh God. Uh, uh, oh. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Okay. Excuse me. Lysifer Soul tipped me four dollars and twenty cents and says thank you for dropping Resident Evil Four last minute and playing the forest. I'm not doing that. Then he did another four dollar twenty cent tip. He said, Do you like fish sticks? You know when I was a kid, I did used to eat fish sticks from once in a, once in a while. I preferred fish sticks with ketchup. I know a lot of people like them with tartar sauce. Tartar? It's not tartar, it's tartar. You have to say the T twice. If you don't say tartar, then you're not saying it properly because it has two T's. Tartar sauce not tartar tartar but anyway um i almost said tartar again uh i haven't had fish sticks in a long time i couldn't even tell you the last time i had a fish stick so i don't know even know if i would like them today um i have no clue but uh i did like it when i was a kid tartar uh gavin did a $5 tip and says, greetings from California, fellow voter. So what if someone did is they tried to use names of like politicians or something here, which is very odd. <laughs> but they did. They tried to use names of politicians uh, as tips. So we had Gavin Newsom. And then we have Jay Inslee, who is the governor of Washington State, who did a tip and said, I have nothing better to do than watch your streams. I'm a huge fan of you, even though you don't like me. <laughs> okay, sure. I'm sure that's the real the real Jay Inslee right there. Um, then... Chad King tipped me a dollar fifty. Said I'm looking forward to Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's not made by Game Freak with the same old and stale formula, but by a different studio. Give the King a second chance, my man. No, I'm definitely not doing that. But I am going to be playing Pokemon Legends Arceus. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. An anonymous tipper tipped a dollar fifty. So I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill over to the Troy Baker thing. He isn't coming off as an ass with his tweets, in my opinion. He's just a dude who said something that sounded off from what he meant, and he corrected it. No, he's an asshole. Uh, Ice Poseidon tipped a dollar fifty. He says, "Hey, dude, he he he, I'm looking forward to the potential conclusion of Resident Evil today. Contributing to the Gunner glasses, hat, and vest. I think you, you have a fourth tier goal. Uh, you know, we've talked about it. We have talked about fourth tier goals. Here's the thing, though. The the, the way that I I judge it is thus: if you consistently are hitting all of your goals, like if every single stream we were hitting hundred fifty dollars in tips, and we were seeing the glasses, the hat." The vest. The glasses, the hat, the vest. Every stream. And like clockwork, we were doing it. Then I would say, okay, listen, maybe now we need to have another tier goal or something different to motivate past the fifth, the 150. But I don't see that as happening. I mean, do we sometimes hit the 150 goal? Yes. Do we hit it every stream? Definitely not. So until we get to that point, I don't think there's a reason to be looking for another goal because it's not common enough to warrant coming up with something that we can consistently do when it's not consistent. You see what I'm saying? He, he, he. Okay, thank you. Then Ice Poseidon did another tip. $1.50. He says, I love the streams, especially Street Fighter and fighting games. Curious you, cu curious you hear about the whole G4 TV debacle. I know why people don't bring up politics. Content creators like you, Phil, are greater than big corporations shilling. Again, all I know is what people have told me, and all I've heard is that I guess they had a segment where they talked about during the years when they weren't around especially during the, the, the Last of Us 2 time, two years ago, that I guess people were didn't like Last of Us 2 and they were under the impression that the only people who didn't like it was because they were bigots and sexists and racists and shit like that, when in reality that was not the case at all. It's like they've completely erased reality, which is exactly what Neil Druckmann did. He literally spun reality into something it wasn't and lied about it all year. Um, and I guess they basically kind of reiterated what Druckmann has said about it. And people are up in arms saying, now you have a major television station lying about what reality was, which is fucked up because people will now believe it because they're dumb. 
and I guess that now there's backlash against them. I again, I don't know. I don't know because I have nothing to do with it. Like I, I didn't watch it. I don't know anything about it. You know. So if I had more information about it, then perhaps I could answer that question. But I didn't see it, so I don't know what they said. So I can't really respond to it. I'd be an idiot to try to just base it off of a supposition of what they said from what people have told me hearsay. Uh, so I don't know. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, so there's one major... Whoops. One major super chat from Kyle this morning. And he says... What's your thought on being on Review Tech USA's soundboard during his live streams and saying, wash your balls, quote, I don't care. Who cares? I mean, I've, I've been around for 14 years. I've probably said every phrase possible. If Rich actually thinks that the best thing that I've ever said that he wants to quote over the time is wash your balls, I mean, he must really have an infatuation with male reproductive organs. I mean, he sucks cucumbers. So he must really just be completely infatuated with the cock and balls. And if that's how he conducts himself, I mean, that's fine. There's no problem with that, I guess. That's, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and and make fun of him. I'm not going to sit here and deride him because he likes to fucking talk about, you know, the trouser snake all day and, and you know, fondling the dangly parts. I mean, maybe he just loves it. He just can't stop thinking about it. Maybe he looks at them all day. I don't know. But if that's what he wants, hey, Rich, wash your balls. Always, because they itch if you don't. There's a quote for you. Use that one. Okay. <clears throat> so thank you, Kyle, for the super chat. I appreciate that. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm now going to open up the stream to open discussion. We have some time. All right. What would you guys like to talk about? Third Nostril says, God of War can be enjoyed at high FPS and latest PC tech. Each console exclusive that comes to PC is a step forward to end fanboyism and create equality and more sales of gaming, so why be mad? I'm not mad at all. If you've been waiting to play God of War on PC because you don't have a PlayStation console, or if you've been waiting for the best version of it because it runs at a higher frame rate, good for you. But it's not news. It's not. Porting an old game to run better on a modern console is not like... Or, or, not a modern console, excuse me. On PC is not news at all. So I don't know why this is like the big news story of the day. Oh, it's, it's everyone's playing it and everyone bought it on PC. Good. And next, there's nothing no there's no story here to talk about. <laughs> Let's see Grandmaster Freemason says, "Can I explain my creative process when it comes to content creation? Literally asking a question that applies to what you do every day." There's a, actually there's a lot that goes into it. You may think that I'm just some asshole who comes into the office and just fucking talks out of his butt every day. It's actually not the case. I do research every day um, on what I want to talk about on stream, particularly for this podcast. Usually for about an hour at night, I'll be reading through social media threads. I'll be looking for news stories uh, in the morning as well because usually a lot of stuff happens overnight. And so I like to bring it up in the morning. I'll be you know going through Twitter or other news articles on the internet, searching for stuff going on, you know, stuff like that. Um, and or... Tiny burp. Wow, it was the world's smallest burp. It was like, boop. Okay, it's out. Um, or, when it comes to, like, the games and stuff that I'm going to play, uh, sometimes I have to think, like, for example, last night, as I was finishing up my late stream of Street Fighter, I started thinking about the schedule for the next day, and I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Okay, well, it's going to be Resident Evil, but what about Resident Evil? People are telling me I might be near the end of it, and then I start brainstorming. I'm like, okay, so how about this? We'll play Resident Evil if we're near the end, then I'll, I'll commit to finishing it on Sunday night because that's a great way to finish the streaming week, to finish an ongoing playthrough people have enjoyed a lot, to see a finale stream last thing when you say goodbye to me for a day and I'm not going to be here on Monday. That's a good way to end it, <clears throat> you see? So I do. I actually put conscious thought into what I'm going to do on a stream. I try to, like, you know, think out, plan out things. Not so in the past. I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't used to do that at all. It was literally more of like a fuck it, I'm just going to jump on and play games kind of an attitude. But that was many years ago. You know, over the years, I've 
become I feel more professional and I care more about what I do today than I think I did in the past when I was just about putting out video game videos on YouTube every day. It's really not what I'm about anymore. It's about putting out a, a piece of content that's interactive and fun and has meaning in addition to just the raw gameplay. <clears throat> so uh, there you go. There's a lot that goes into it. And every day could be different. Someday it could be easy because, wow, look at all these prominent news stories. Just read through them. Okay, I'm good. I'm good for tomorrow. Another day it might be like, well, there's one news story, but not much else to talk about. Now what do I want to talk about on the podcast tomorrow? Well, let me think about this, or maybe I can talk about this topic and blah, blah, blah. What else is going on? You see? <laughs> so there's definitely a process behind it. Um, Let's see here. Ellipsian says, why not do two new Game Pass games tomorrow to find a game that I like more for a new playthrough instead of rushing to continue ones I played? Because I don't want to play 17 games and now be like, oh, now I can't decide between them. I liked both Sniper, Elite, and I liked I Am Fish, okay? Definitely, I think I want to do Sniper Elite. It's, it intrigued me. Now, if we do a major stream of it and it sucks, I don't have to keep going. But I want to give it a shot, I feel. After that first hour, it was enough to hook me. The last thing I want to do, Lipsy, and what if I do three, four of these nights? Now I have ten games I've tried. Now how the fuck do I even figure out what to play? It's too much. That's way too much overload. I, the way I'm going to do it, do a little bit here. Oh, is there a game that's good? Great. Try it. Okay, is it a good playthrough? Yes. No? Okay, fuck it. Now go back. Try another game. Or else, what's the point? I'm rushing through, trying a million games, and now it's way too much going on at once. You see? Oh, let's see here. Biohazard Fallout says, why don't I set a $250 goal to extend my streams by an hour? I think incentives like that would work. It doesn't need to be this, this, uh, all the time once a week. Here's why. Because I am a very busy guy, as you know. I have a set schedule of streams that I do, right? And in between those streams, you may not realize it, but I'm very busy. I have a life here where I have to maintain a household. I have a, a wife who I like to spend time with. Other shit I have to do behind the scenes. I can't always stay late. Like last night, I was able to stay later than usual. It was an exception to the rule. Most of the time, I don't have enough time around the streams or, or between them to even do all the shit I need to do. Like today, I'll give you some perspective. So I'm going to finish the Resident Evil 4 stream. I got to uh, set up all those videos to upload, set up the stream for the next stream that's going to start in two and a half hours. Then I got to go downstairs. I got to make dinner. I got to eat dinner. I got to clean up after dinner. I got to make sure Jasper has everything that he needs for the day, like food and water and stuff like that. I got to shave. I got to shower. I got to wash up. Then I got to get back in here, set up the next stream, and then I'm streaming. There's, like, no time to do shit. Now, how do I stay an hour later? Now, what do I not do? Don't eat? You see, I just, there's no time. It's, you know, back in the day, when I was a full-time YouTuber, okay? I didn't maintain a household. I was just some asshole, single, sitting in a condo with nothing to do all fucking day with my thumb up my ass. So, if I wanted to play a game for 12 hours straight, I could play a game for 12 hours straight. All right? It's not my life anymore. I'm very busy. I have shit to do. You know, outside of just being here playing games all day. This very much is my job, as well as my hobby, but it's my job. You see, like, I have other stuff, responsibilities outside of this room that I can't be in here extra hours every single day. There's other people who maybe that's not the case. They have the ability to just fucking sit here all day, you know, streaming. That's more power to them. I used to be like that. I'm not anymore. I, You know, I, I grew up and I got other stuff, shit that I, I got to do every day. There you go. Okay, let's see here. How did I not know Troy Baker's NFTs were voice? Because he doesn't even say it in the fucking post. That's how bad his original Twitter post was. He literally doesn't even fucking say in the post that his NFTs are voice. I thought the NFT was the picture in the fucking post. It wasn't. It was he's actually doing NFTs for his voice. And you had to actually do research. You had to look into the company that he tweeted to figure out what kind of a company they were to figure that out. He's an idiot. <clears throat> okay let's see here I am bread is on sale for less than three bucks on PlayStation will I give it a try says Randy I mean I'm not rushing to play that right now Randy but maybe in the future I, I mean I just tried I am fish <laughs> <clears throat> will I consider playing Yakuza 3 during downtime later this year no no I'm not in the mood to play a Yakuza game right now. How do I overcome alcoholism? Well, what you got to do is when you are so hardcore addicted to a substance, you have to slowly wean yourself off of it. I mean, you can hardcore quit, but you usually will have tons of bad uh, reactions. Your body will have these withdrawal symptoms. If you go to a doctor, a doctor can prescribe you medication for that. So if you just want to go cold turkey off of any substance, it could be cigarettes, 
alcohol, other other drugs and things. Hell, in some cases, it's like food and stuff, right? And you're quitting cold turkey, you're shocking your body. You can have a doctor prescribe medication so that the withdrawal symptoms aren't so bad. Um, <clears throat> but I weaned myself off. You know, at one point in my life, I'm not exaggerating, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm ashamed of this, but I'm not ashamed to talk about it now because, thank God, I'm not like this anymore. I used to take a giant plastic cup that was this big. So a regular plastic cup, 8 ounces, is probably like this. This cup was probably anywhere from 16 to 24 ounces. Giant cup, okay? And I would fill it with rum about two-thirds of the way up. And then I would take Coke Zero, and I would just pour just enough to give it a Coke flavor. But man, it was mostly rum. And I would drink that entire fucking cup every fucking night. And that was for like, I'm not kidding, years. Because I was depressed. I hated my life. I hated who I was. I hated everything about it. And I just couldn't live with it, you know? It was, it was too fucking messed up. My head was screwed on wrong. And I just, that was how I got through it. I would sit there drinking every night. That's why some of my earlier playthroughs on YouTube, you hear me so completely drunk slurring and shit. Because that's how I used to be back then, you know? And then what happened is, turned my life around. I found a reason to, to, to motivate myself to not be like that anymore. To realize that people like who I am as a person. They want me to succeed and be healthy. That there's people out there who care about me and love me and want to see me not fall into a gutter somewhere. Um, you know? And then, once things started to turn around for me in my life, like I became a YouTuber and people actually were, oh, wow, well, I love Phil's content. He's a valuable person and stuff. Wow! You know, and then it motivated me to not want to do that shit anymore. And I did. I weaned myself off of it slowly but surely, which is great. <clears throat> Grandmaster Freemason says, why am I drinking for two different bottles every day? Well, because I like two different things to drink. This is flavored seltzer water. Black cherry flavored seltzer water. No sugar, but it's got that artificial sweetener shit in it. Sucralose. Yeah, whatever the fuck sucralose is. And then this is just filtered water filtered water from my fridge so the reason i have that is because if you just drink this all day you might get tired of the flavor you might get too much too much carbonation gassy Ugh. this is where you know a nice way to, to alternate and be refreshed some nice water but then you might get tired of that you want some flavor so then you go back to the seltzer and then you say oh i'm tired of that i don't want that and then you go back to the water and you're like oh you know what i want something with some flavor so then you go back to the seltzer and you're like, oh i'm too gassy i don't want this and then you go back to the water and you're like oh that's good and refreshing but now i'm out of the water shit i gotta go back to the seltzer so you grab the cells all right enough of that let's see here <clears> oh <throat> uh, the, 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 the. Jack Murphy says, there are a few other content creators who actually care about their supporters beyond what they can do directly for them. A disclaimer on each stream could warn them ahead of time before it's too late. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Like, put an actual disclaimer on the stream. And the only thing I could think to do would be, like, a pre-stream slide or something. Like, warning, be careful of the information you put on the internet. It could be used against you. And, you know, be diligent to make sure your, your personal info isn't linked on social media and stuff. I guess I could do that, but... I don't have the capability to make anything like that excuse me i don't have any any editing software or anything to be able to make a disclaimer like that so if someone wanted to make one maybe i consider putting it on the stream happy saturday guts good to see you here yes more resident evil 4 today i'm excited to listen to this now gia how am i supposed to answer this question what is the reason for you slurring in the modern era? Okay. First of all, obviously this is a qualifying question. And I talked about this the other day. Qualifying questions. What it means is the question already assumes something as a fact, even though it hasn't been proven that it's a, a, a fact. And it's usually for a negative reason. And it goads you into an answer. Okay. So this a qualifying question is essentially saying, why are you slurring in the modern era? Well, who says that I'm slurring in the modern era? And where's your evidence that this is a constant thing? Now, here's the thing. I'll tell you, yeah, I've noticed over as I get older that things that used to be easy for me aren't as easy. That, yes, as I get older, reactions get slower. The brain doesn't work as well in some cases. Um, you know what I'm saying? As you get older, things just changes. Th things just changes. Things just change. Oh my God, was that a slur? Because I miss I misspoke. Here's the thing. Back in the day, 
um, back in the day, I used to talk a lot on camera, right? But was it on live stream? No. It was all recorded with a camera. So you have no idea if I used to actually do this back in the day or if maybe, just maybe, there would be multiple takes and I would upload the take that was the best one or the one where I didn't fuck up, right? The truth is, yes, back in the day, I did used to have some issues where I would screw up on camera recording a channel update or the week in preview. I'm like, ah, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Oh, fuck, I said the wrong thing. Or my, right, I, I slurred my words and it sounded stupid. So I would just recut it or, re, or redo it. You see what I'm saying? Um, and you don't, you don't get that on a live stream, okay? Other thing is, I'm talking today way more than I ever did before. I do a whole podcast that's usually an hour or longer in the morning. Then I'm talking all day over live gameplay, right? It's all talk, 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 talk. And <clears throat> it actually, I feel, if you actually compare what I do today to what I actually used to do back in the day, I actually think I do a much better job of it now than I used to. I used to slur my words more or get confused more, use the wrong words. I used to actually like, you know what I'm saying? Like get tongue tied way more often. Also, I wasn't as confident when I talked. I also, I felt like, um, what's the word? Like I, lis I listen back to some of the, the videos that I did 10, 10 or more years ago, right? I'll listen to them. And I'll sound like, man, I, I didn't sound like, assertive. That's the word. Assertive. I didn't feel like I was confident in who I was or that I was, you know, it was more like second guessing myself half the time when I was talking. Um, and now I sound a lot different. Like if you listen to me talking every day, my mannerisms when I talk and the way that I say things is definitely more, uh, confident, more, more strength behind it. Cause I've now gotten used to talking at length all day, every day. You see, uh, it's funny cause you look 10 years back at project seven, the show where it was me and my friends just dicking around, making a stupid comedy show. And a lot of the dialogue is terrible and delivered poorly. I actually feel that today, if I were to do a show like that and I were in it, my lines would be much better. Because now I've gotten so used to doing this every day, talking all day at length and having this kind of conversational tone with you guys. and That my delivery is just a lot better. You know what I'm saying? But back then, it was just kind of like, I'm just talking to a game all day. I'm not even talking to people. I'm just kind of yelling at a game. So it was a lot different kind of, a, of a, a deal. You know what I mean? Now, I'll tell you, as I get older, yes, I notice a lot of things change. Number one, I get tired more easily. I do. I find myself actually getting tired out more easily the older I get. I used to be full of energy and be able to go all day long. I don't really have that anymore. As I told you guys, what I like to do now is I have a coffee in the morning and I have a coffee during my break between the streams. And actually, I'm not kidding you. It clears my mind completely. I might have like a mind cloud going on because I'm, I'm either tired or maybe I ate a big meal for dinner. Oh, it kind of makes me feel real exhausted. When I have that coffee, it, it actually re-stimulates my mind to feel like I'm ready to go again. And now here we go. I have found that since I started having a coffee in the morning, these pre-stream podcasts are good and fun and I can talk and easily on the fly adjust. I'm answering your questions on the fly here. It makes me feel good. It does. And actually they, they found out that, you know, certain activities like exercise, uh, good diet, actually drinking coffee a few times a day. There's certain things you can do as you get older that will actually make you more astute and feel like you have more energy and more your brain is more on the ball. You know what I'm saying? And... I'm going to end up having to do a lot of these things as I get older. Because if I don't, I might start slurring my words. I My brain might start slowing down. I might have issues, you know. So, no. I don't constantly slur my words. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Your qualifying question is insulting and you're a fucking asshole. But, yes, as I get older, yes, there are things that... that are going to basically kind of change. My hand-eye coordination won't be as good. My brain won't feel as sharp. And I'm going to have to do things in order to adjust for that to keep myself on the ball. I'm a content creator. I can't sit here and fall and half a fucking sleep all day, right? I got to be on my, my fucking reflexes. Got to be good. I got fucking Las Plagas to kill today. I can't be fucking dicking around. <laughs> you know? Okay. Easy peasy 91 says, well, I consider replaying Cuphead. Maybe. Cuphead was a really great game, and it's hilarious because they still didn't fucking release the DLC, and it feels like they should have already released a sequel. Seriously. Like, it was... I, 
it's to the point where I played Cuphead so long ago that people are like, will you play it again? It's like, dude, the DLC didn't even come out yet. <laughs> well, I play the original game again, right? Okay. Uh, Third Nostril says, see the Twitch panel clip. A streamer with 10 viewers killed his career. He says he has a god complex and doesn't care about his viewers. Do top streamers have this mentality? What? I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. It's another qualifying question. I'm not answering that. It's ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Ramrod Reamer, what a name, says Max Payne series are now compatible with the Xbox Series X. How about playing the second one? You never played it, but you did play the first one. Maybe I would play it. I don't see a reason why not. If people wanted to see it, I would consider it. Yeah. By the way, guys, if you are enjoying today's stream, now that we have over 300 people on today's stream, please consider giving the stream a like. When you like my content here on YouTube, especially the live streams, it gives them more discoverability. And in just a few minutes, I am going to start playing Resident Evil 4. It would be great if people on YouTube searching for like, oh, survival horror stream or whatever, would see it pop up in their search and they could come join us as I start with gameplay. That'd be really cool. So thank you to everyone watching and thanks to anyone who likes the stream. I really appreciate that. Okay. So because the prize is, do you think you were weird and shy before you started YouTubing? No. I was an outgoing guy in the Street Fighter community. People knew me as the guy who was an asshole in the Street Fighter community. <laughs> no, like, you know, really, like, I was, I was a well-known guy in the Street Fighter community. Some people really liked me and some people hated my guts, but I was always kind of an outgoing guy and I was the guy who actually was the one who would motivate my friends and or co-players in the area to do shit. I'd be like, let's go to the tournament. I'll drive everyone. Let's organize this. We'll get a hotel room. I'll re reserve it in my name. But even when pay like five, ten bucks and chip in, and we'll do this and this. And I was the one who was the outgoing motivational guy among my groups of friends. So no, I was not shy and introverted and shit like that. Liza Versolis tipped me four dollars twenty cents. Says if Resident Evil Four had waifu missions, would you pick Ashley or Ada? I like Chinese food better. You're a disgusting individual. You're an embarrassment to this stream. Thank you for the tip, Lysa, for salt. Let's continue. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. You're dying to know what coffee I drink? Uh, I get the K... K... Keurig... K-Cup Pods of, like, Starbucks. I think we drink Colombian and sometimes Pike Place Roast or something like that. Nothing special. Basically, if, if, if it's on sale, we'll get it. But some of the, the low-grade coffees, they taste terrible. So we usually get something... The thing is, I drink it black. I'm not looking for flavor. I'm just looking for something that's strong and will give me a real caffeine kick. So that's usually what we buy. Am I a Starbucks fan? I don't go to Starbucks regularly, No. I'm not like, oh, I go out of my way to get a Starbucks or anything like that. Have I ever heard the song The Last Dragonborn by Dragon Force? It's about Skyrim. I think it's cool when bands make songs about games that I like, says JT. No, I never heard it. I, I'm aware there is game music out there. Or, excuse me, there's music out there based on games. There's actual entire artists who, like, everything they do is based on a video game. And they're popular for it. But, no, I've never heard that particular one. Easy Peasy 91 has tipped me $5. Since in the early 30s, I definitely feel the difference. If I stay up late at night, it kills my whole next one or two days. Nothing like my 20s where I could go all night and go to work the next day. Right. I remember in my 20s, there'd be nights. And this is like, remember the era of when like MMOs and shit started just hitting? And like, I remember World of Warcraft coming out. And I would fucking play World of Warcraft, no exaggeration, till like 4 or 5 in the morning. And then be able to get up at like 8 to go to work. And I was fine. I was tired, but I was fine. I can't, are you crazy? You think I could do that shit today? I wouldn't be able to move. It'd be like someone tied me up in bed. I can't move. <laughs> but that's what I used to do. I used to do shit like that. Okay. Okay. Anything else, guys? Thank you for your contributions on the pre-stream, by the way. I would say last chance, guys. Anyone else has questions to ask? You want some answers quick before we get into Resident Evil 4 today? Now would be your chance. <clears throat> Any game that I'm excited for in particular? 
uh, in February. I'm excited for literally every release. Like, Sifu looks really good for an indie game. Could be a great time. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West, duh. Excited for that. Great. It looks amazing, right? The graphics look super good. Um, Dying Light 2, I'm hoping is going to be good after the weight, the incredible weight that we had for it. Uh, King of Fighters 15, I played two betas for it, and it looks really good. And I just hope that people will continue to play it, because it has a lot of characters, and it could have a lot of content to it. So I hope it ends up doing well. And of course, Elden Ring is the end-all, be-all. Like, people are going to go nuts for that shit. People are going to go crazy. They're going to come to the streams freaking out to see me play Elden Ring, because they love watching me fail at From Software games. And by the way, I'm going to fucking fail. I haven't played a From Software game in a long-ass time, guys. I'm going to suck ass, and it's fine. Perfectly fine. Lies of Soul tips $4.20 says, Why should I get vaccinated if everyone is going to eventually get it and I'm not around anyone who is actually under quarantine? Because when you get vaccinated, if you do happen to be unlucky enough to get COVID, you won't die. So if you like not dying and staying alive, get vaccinated and don't be stupid. There's my answer. I mean, it's really dumb that people are not getting vaccinated. You have to be an idiot. No, really. There's no actual justification for it. You're just stupid. There's, you know... Unless you have a medical reason, the doctor says, this is too unhealthy and risky for you, don't get vaccinated. If that hasn't happened to you and you're not vaccinated, you're a fucking idiot. There's just, I, I'm sorry. It's actually not opinion. It's fact. You're stupid. <laughs> oh, if I get sick with this disease, I will not die if I'm vaccinated. Let me not get vaccinated. Okay, genius. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Mark says, I completed Returnal. It was very difficult. It is difficult. I agree with you there. It is difficult. Some people are afraid of needles. Some people are more afraid of needles than dying. Logic. Some people don't have it. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you finished the House of Ashes playthrough, Mr. Dude. Hopefully you liked it. Anything else? Really nothing. I don't see anything else coming in. Maybe we'll just end the pre-stream. Darziak says, you'll be running into the scariest thing in Resident Evil 4 at the start of the game today. Well, I think I remember, because I'm in a part, and remember, it looked like a medical bay. And I, if I remember correctly, isn't this the fucking enemy that won't die? Like, you can't kill it. No matter what you do, all you can do is slow it down or freeze it, and it doesn't die. This is the origination of that. I think what they're going for is kind of like Nemesis in this, but it's not Nemesis. Right? And then later, if you remember, if I remember correctly, didn't this later on translate into other horror games? Like, for example, in, uh, um, how the fuck am I having a brain fart? Dead Space 2. Dead Space 2 has the same premise where there's an enemy that no matter how many times you shoot it and no matter what you do, you think you killed it, but it comes back to life and you have to keep running from it, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what's coming up. Okay. All right, we're ready. I guess people are saying we're ready to go. All right, guys. So here's what we'll say. Thank you. Great pre-stream today. This is I like doing a variety of pre-streams. You know, some days I have a lot to talk about. Like yesterday, today I don't. So I like having the interaction and answering your questions live when I can. So it was good to do that. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Something different. And me talking, actually talking conversationally with you, and answering questions rather than me just talking about a topic outright, right? All right. So that's it for the pre-stream podcast. Hope you had a good time, guys. Thanks to those who supported it. Thanks to those who liked the stream to help. Awesome. Thanks. Cool.